We come to the end of this conference. I, I thank you very much. Uh, the point here is uh, an event to power the world. And the ways to do that uh, we can all argue about and so on, but we have to meet to discuss them and take it one step forward at a time. And, uh, and uh, the reasons are basically environmental uh, and money. And that is given by the uh, uh, history, two historic figures many, many years ago. Alvin Weinberg was an environmentalist at heart, and Glenn Seaborg, he was quite excited when he thought he discovered a 50 quadrillion dollar uh, energy opportunity. So that is kind of the foundation of what we're trying to do. Uh, you have heard some, uh, some uh, uh, 40 speakers, um, you have met the experts, I hope you have become inspired, you've seen the documentary, uh, first time I think it was in, in English. Um, the energy tour is still ongoing, um, the molten salt loop was unfortunately cancelled, we hope they will return at some future event and we will see actual flowing molten salt at an event where everyone can see it live. Uh, this was the sixth event um, and uh, we're working on the next of course. I hope you have all enjoyed the time here. Uh, this is maybe the more interesting one. Uh, if you see the similarities you can pinpoint yourself and give yourself an equation name. I must thank the partners, uh, Energy and SEK, CEN. It wouldn't be possible without this support. And uh, without their support, there wouldn't be an event where you can, can come and meet these people. So thank you again. Um, but what we really should aim for is, is something really big. Uh, yes, we need to get started somewhere, and there's shortcuts to get started. But it doesn't really matter. We have three big challenges. Um, and it's energy poverty, air pollution, and climate change. China is already underway with a, a rather big project, and that is because of the second reason, air pollution, uh, which they can see every day when they go to work. Uh, we might not have that reason in front of us, but certainly energy poverty is, is great in the world, and I would argue myself, I, I I live in energy poverty certain months of the year when the weather is cold and I turn down the electricity heating. It shouldn't be that way. I should be able to heat the house every day of the year. That is a, to some part energy poverty. We can get to a totally different level of energy access and energy affordability. You are the key to this. Uh, that is what is important. And that probably means something like uh, powering one town at a time. This is Geneva, uh, roughly 500,000 people. This is from a, uh, an old presentation. But if you take it on a global perspective, so what I'm getting to is you can take shortcuts today to get to a market and get investors or government money and so on. But we, we need something really big. And we needed it 10 years ago, we needed it 50 years ago. Still it's not there, right? Uh, we have something like 70 or 80 percent fossil fuel still today and um, it's not decreasing very fast. So we need something like um, 3,000 power plants for electricity. That's only one third of what we need. We need another one third, uh, which is 3,000 power plants for transportation. And roughly another one, 3,000 for heat. That is today's need, and if you look at the development, we're going to need much more than that. Uh, stuff is going on, for sure. Um, this is from our report. Um, and China is taking the lead. I don't know if this part of the world will want to buy the reactors they will have to sell. Um, there should be a market opportunity uh, uh, given as well. Uh, a reactor based on market conditions rather than only the Chinese option and it's up to you guys to, to, to make that happen. 
Um, we are doing a very small part of this. We bring you to one and the same room and uh, hopefully that brings innovation and uh, competition to thrive. And the other small things that we do is we offer a membership and a way for you to, to tell your friends about the opportunity here. And one way is to, to wear it. You can go to throwyourmanageworld.com and buy a t-shirt, a hoodie, a cap, a coffee mug, and in that way tell anyone else on town or at home. And um, with that I want to conclude that the best panel we can have at this <laughs> third day is probably at the beer factory once again. That seems to be the most productive space. Um, I can't welcome you to a specific location for the next conference yet. We're working on alternatives. Um, and uh, I hope to get back to you soon with this. But before that, I also want to thank the volunteers that have been essential to, uh, to this event. Um, this is a grassroots operation, obviously, uh, low budget, uh, but Anton he has taken well care of this computer and the presenters. Thank you very much for making it all the way here. <laughs> Billy has biked all the way here. That's pretty crazy, I think. Billy told me that uh, basically I had to figure out a way to ship his bike from US to Europe. I offered, I sell lasers all, all over the world, so I'm used to shipping lasers, but bikes was a different thing to import or export to Europe. Uh, <laughs> he was afraid that I was going to go missing on the, uh, on the airplane, and very well. I got him to ship it with the, <laughs> with the airliner, and when, we land, when he landed in, in Oslo, the, the bag was very well missing. So we started in, in <laughs> with some uh, gear missing, and uh, still we had a good time, I think. Uh, three days later, the bike arrived. We, um, we used the opportunity well before that, uh, racing around in Norway. We went into thorium mines, we went up on glaciers, we went under glaciers, we talked to the craziest ski system in the world, I would say. <laughs> There's a huge glacier in, in southern Norway, Folgefonna. If you look at Google Maps, it's just a white big dot in the southern part. These guys have a, a ski system on the northern slope. There's one lift, uh, anchor lift, pulling them up, and uh, the national team goes there for summer training and whatever, because they, they can be open year-round, basically. And uh, we had a, a tour there by a glaciologist, which was very interesting. But we also had a different type of tour by the, uh, the guy who ran the facility. And, and there it's, it's pretty, pretty obvious the problems we're facing, to be honest, uh, and scary. Uh, the, the lift starts by going down these days because they built it from rock and then up on the glacier. But the glacier is melting, so the lift is going down and then it starts going up. And these guys, uh, I mean, we had never been there or seen the place before, but they, they, have, they are scrambling all the snow they can, and they get something like 12 meters per year, so they, they get a lot of it. Uh, they scramble all of that, and they put uh, textiles on top. So you have some, I don't know, many hundred square meters uh, of textile-covered snow layers they build every year. They are trying to fill out the missing glacier. Um, if you think long term, like a physicist, like a scientist, that seems like a bad idea. Uh, but they are still doing it, and they are burning, what did you say, 5,000 liters of diesel every year to accumulate that snow? So I don't know if it <laughs> doesn't really make sense, but yeah, they do it anyway. Um, I want to t thank, uh, thank Eric. Uh, you did the longest bus ride to get here, I think. You did 32 hours. Thanks a lot for, your, uh, for showing your passion. <laughs> and um, Joseph, are you here? There you are. Thanks a lot for, for your help with the interviews and everything. Great job. And I must uh, thank the youngest in the audience, 
Jonna. Uh, 17 years making it all the way from Canada, alone, no parents. Uh, that's that's pretty brave and shows commitment. I, you're the you're the future. I wonder how many of our conferences you will go to before we have a reactor up and running. Hopefully not too many. Anyway, uh, with that I want to thank you all for, for coming. It really means a lot. Without that it wouldn't happen. And I think we're on to something. Let's just make it happen. Thank you very much and see you next time.